have gone on record to saying, I think sometimes we talk too, um, we, we, we reach too readily for talking about the environment when we're talking to people, and uh, which sounds counterintuitive, but the, 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 the lighthearted quip I, I make is if you were in bed on Sunday, there was a loud knock at the door, you tramped down in your dressing gown feeling grumpy, and there's the Pope at the door having got you out of bed early, and he said, did you know I was a Catholic? Mm. You might be a little bit pissed off and think to yourself, he got me out of bed to tell me what I know, why don't you talk about something you don't know? I think most people know that we, A, are very concerned about all kinds of environmental matters and know quite a lot about them and have people in the party who know a lot about them talking about the things that people don't know about us. Do we know how to run the rest of a country? Mm. To pay for, to in, to legally do all the things mm. that we want to do. That's what I think we should be talking about. But as, yeah. as far as the the um, uh, election, the last couple of elections, the, there was, from the other parties, it was clear that the environment was still not on their agenda in any way, shape or form. In this last election, you're right, if we, if we talked a lot about the environment, it, it wouldn't have, uh, it, it wouldn't have helped our vote. Well, our vote, uh, uh, our vote going up and down had nothing fracking, to do with. Fracking, I, I think that's been dropped now, even by Theresa May, which is great because crap, uh, fracking is crap. You know, there's lots well, of evidence of that. So, so people like Louise Rothbury, she's brilliant. You know, they, for the frackers. Yeah. That's well, and you've written about it. that in the states as well, and it's it's founded on debt bubbles and you know pump and dumps and you know. The theory of the greatest is, fall. It, it, it's a deeply, price. deeply dishonest technology, and the, mm. the whole, the whole um, politics around it is. It pollutes and it's awful. I mean, it's it's absolutely terrible. And but but well, I mean, for, for, uh, just I was a, a little while ago, and you know, it, it, the, the the people who are talking about fisheries and pollution of the sea, they were saying, you know, it's still amazing how people still treat the ocean as if it was just an infinite sink. Mm. You know, in, in all of their discussions, they were saying, you know, talking about all kinds of people, once they say, and then we'll put it in the sea, it's as if, oh, and it's yeah. gone. I, I think the Green Party has become <laughs> that's intellectual. that's what the frackers are saying. Yes, yeah. I know there'll be hundreds of millions of gallons of polluted water, but we put it in the sea. Yeah. The, the Green Party is intellectually lazy on the environment. That's my criticism. There's so much that they could be saying and are not saying, and they fall back on denier, denier, and maybe, by, maybe. Um, I, I, you know, I know it's a big, I know it's a big thing for you. I, I, I think. Well, I, the environment is a huge it, thing for me. I'm a confirmed tree hugger. The Green hugger. Party, I think, is a lot less lazy than any other party. Let's put it that way. At least, uh, it, it, I think if the Green Party didn't exist, the other it's a very low bar. I mean, I'll forward. give you, I'll, I'll give you that. But w one thing I find interesting about the Green Party, and I've heard you say it yourself, is we're the only ones that, or you know, we're the only ones that care, or we're the only ones that can. And mm. I mean, I those sorts of general statements are never true. I mean, in logic, you can't, it, it's just not su uh, sustainable. It makes people feel better, but I just yeah. end up cringing, thinking, oh my goodness me, you know, how, how could anyone say that? Because well, it's, I mean, it's never if, true. If that's all you say, I agree with you. But I think it's, it, it, it's I would say that it's, it's a true thing to say that the, the Green Party, along with Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace, um, have dragged the other parties very unwillingly um, um, into having to talk about these things. Um, I think the danger is thinking that that's enough, that that's our job. I mean, it, it, after this election, there have been, you know, okay, it doesn't matter so much that our, our vote collapsed because our job is to be there at the cutting edge and to drag the other parties um, uh, to, 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 to drag the political discussion towards these more, um, the, the things that they, the other parties won't discuss. If that's all the party is, then we don't need to exist because Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth can do it. And, and, and that's not what the country needs. The country needs a radical party that can yeah. um, 
I, I agree government. with that. And, Let, they, let's and, talk. And, and if we lose sight of that, then there's no point for us, really. Okay, well, let's move on to proportional representation then, because, again, the big <laughs> chance for that was, what, 2012, which the Lib Dems got for their ill-fated coalition. The turnout was abominable. Hmm. I, I, it wasn't the easiest voting system in the world to... And again, it wasn't pushed by the establishment because they didn't want it. So it's sure. yet another dishonest campaign mm. by, by establishment politicians on all sides. Yeah. Um, but what is about the Green Party that doesn't participate in its own democracy? And was it 47% or 38% turnout in the leadership election? Amazing, and an online yeah. vote, and thirty-eight percent of people vote, or, or whatever yeah. it was. It was very low. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I think the point you raise is a good one in the sense that if if the Green Party is a is a party that you know says we're, we're people who understand that people want to vote, and if they're given the right things to vote, and a system where their vote counts, they will vote then our election is not a great advert. Oh, um, it so. does suggest that... Um, and the failure to mobilise the uh, vote for a, something... A better voting system, where, you know, which, which we have, we have PR, um, isn't... Now, if that was the case, if it was an automatic thing, then there'd be a 100% or at least a 90% turnout in the Green Party leadership election. And as you say, it wasn't. It was a 30-something percent vote. Well, and, and so, so the other side of that as well is the the Green Party is saying, oh, let's lower the voting age, which I disagree with. I don't. I, I, okay, I would raise the many, voting too age. Too many things going on here. I mean, um, um, yeah, I I I am um, not convinced that lowering the voting age from eighteen to sixteen is a good idea. Um, I certainly don't think it's a it's a it's a cure all. Um, because I know some 16-year-olds who are intelligent, incisive, and would make good voters. Um, I know others who are um, irresponsible, um, ignorant, stupid, and would make dreadful voters. And, 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 and what I see is that um, it's not that people start out at 16 being wonderfully intelligent, incisive, um, and responsible. And some point in their 60s, all of that dies and they become irresponsible, selfish idiots are there at 16. And the 86-year-old irresponsible, selfish idiots were probably selfish idiots when they were 16. Yeah, well, I plan so to remain one till I'm I'm not sure six. that it's... Um, <laughs> and there's too, many, there's too many kids who are too... Not as kids, not all, a lot, are very, very influenced by their parents. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm. I'm not convinced that um, that lowering the voting age is a is a, a is a genius plan. I think of 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 the problems we face, it's it's not by any means the biggest. But I, I understand the green because we do. If under that, we do get a certain which never translates into. Um, getting a voice in Parliament, and, and that system does seem unfair. We, we would have to um, be resigned to the fact that if we'd had PR in the last, not this last election, but on before, for instance, um, we'd have got, what, eight seats? Mm. Um, and we would all have gone, yay, eight yep. seats, great, good. Uh, UKIP would have got, what, 20, I think? Yeah, which is fine. I mean, I, you know. A lot of the people who want the Green Party to get more seats are equally vehemently, passionately uh, against UKIP in, in all its forms and would be horrified. So, you you know, you have to be careful what you wish for. I, I, I would like CPR. I think it's a, 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 a better system than our... And our, our system is getting worse and worse through um, successive layers of gerrymandering to the point where it becomes dysfunctional. So I... I, I, yeah, I think I, PR is coming, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's with us within five years. Well, I hope so. Uh, and, and the notion that, you know, in, in the, the election debates we had in, um, in Scarborough and Whitby, uh, we had the Tory candidates saying, well, the problem with 
PR is you end up with unstable governments who have to make um, um, unstable alliances, whereas at least our first past the post system, you get, he says, yeah, you get yeah. strong governments who can just um, stick with whatever they said they would do. <laughs> yeah. that, I mean, that comes back to the consensus point that, you know. <laughs> just, uh, I, even as he said it, I thought, uh, Robert, you are going to regret saying that. But, you know, he's a Tory, he's not going to regret anything. Isn't he in a safe seat as well? Although Labour did come within 4,000 mm. um, um, of unseating him. Yeah. Um, well, maybe they will uh, next time. I mean, I think there's an appetite for... It's not so much... It's not socialism that is attracting people to the Labour Party. It's the austerity thing. I think the Tories have cottoned on to that. It's just they're not authentic. You can't believe that they're being authentic about, you know, what Mrs May is saying about, uh, you know, we've got to do this better and prioritise oh, mental health. And I mean, their approach to austerity is just to make it more efficient. Yes. That we should all save more, yeah. harder, longer, yeah. better. So... Yeah, it's 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 complicated. Yes, I agree that, that 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 this election was about austerity. With the success of your prediction that we would have an election within two years, yeah. last time round, what about this one? Are yeah, you, I think we'll have think an election might... before two years. Yeah. This time, um, I said to Robert Goodwill, the, the Tory, I said, "Well, don't get too comfortable because we'll be back here within a year." Yeah. Um, but. Um, I certainly hope know, so. Making, making predictions about these things is, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, look, um, we've I, done... I, I, I can't see the Tories slogging this out because they can't really get their programme. They, they can't do all the things they want to do. She called that election because she thought, this is our moment. This is where we've got to go for it. And I do think the globalists, mm -hmm. of both left and right, and there are left-wing globalists, um, they are thinking now's the moment. This is where we go for it. Yeah. What and do you make the, of Macron the, the along? Liberal globalist that, uh, and, and I think that's what she wanted to do. The fact that it's not happened for her um, uh, means that I think that they'll just want to get s something substantive yeah. uh, agreed for Brexit so that it's so that we're on the downhill slope, so that we can't scramble from their point of view, you can't scramble back up. Mm. Um, and then I think they'll um they might get rid of mrs may i think they would have before now except who their right mind would sacrifice their political career to stand in her shoes so she she's got to be the one who ends up under the bus and she will be mm. um and then and then i think they'll they'll call another election yeah well will get corbyn the hospital pass <laughs> Well, I hope because I mean it is I mean, impossible. I, I mean, I, in his case, it is still in control of the Labour Party, I says or not. I think he's done the country a great service by at least throwing open the doors and windows mm -hmm. of our political discussion the way they had been been successfully um, nailed shut by the Blairites, as if the outside of the very narrow centre ground didn't exist anymore. Yeah, well, I think I, on I, those I, grounds, the country owes him uh, yeah. a vote of thanks on those grounds yeah. alone. I, I agree with you, but the and, and I want to see him in government, but I, I think the problems only start there. You know, we talked about the grand coalition idea, yeah. because you come back to money and the global money power. Well, this this is yeah. and that's the what hospital. What I said parts. in the election, because it was a very difficult one for me, because I wanted to see Corbyn do well. I wanted someone to make sure the Tories didn't get a majority. So I I, I was not anti Labour. So it made it very difficult, therefore, in all good conscience, to run a good, solid campaign. What I said is, I I understand people want to vote, but a, a lot of the people who might have voted for Corbyn because they see Labour as being able to beat the Tories. And I agree. The problem is this. I think Labour are the only party that can beat the Tories. Tories are the only party that can beat Labour. And our politics is stuck in those two sides absolutely fixated on each side wanting to beat the other. The problem is neither, I don't think, can beat the problems and the powers set against this country. The problems that actually fate us, I think neither the, the Tories don't want to beat them and Labour, I do not. That's my problem. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm delighted that Labour can beat the Tories, but they can't. 
they don't yet show to me that they understand how to beat the problems set against us. I mean, it looks, the... it looks highly unlikely that they will be able to form a government without some sort of coalition, even with the SD, with, with the uh, Scottish National Party. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was about what happened in Scotland, that the SNP lost so many votes. But I, I, you know, I wonder whether that was their attitude to Brexit. I, I mean, I don't could, know. Could, could I'm well no expert. I, I don't know. I mean, um, I, I think that's 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 well, that's quite possible. Brexit was tied uh, up I, with the, the new referendum. The whole Brexit thing is that that no one has, none of the media have told the truth about Brexit for so long mm -hmm. that it's very difficult to feel, no matter what you've read, that you are genuinely well informed about the truth. I don't feel it's a subject. I don't yeah. feel I can honestly say. I D David, no. we've gone. Has opinion swung against Brexit? Mm -hmm. A whole set of newspapers and pundits will say, tell you absolutely yes, and another set will say no, it hasn't. And and certainly the election vote would suggest that um, Bre this rolling back Brexit wasn't the number one thing for the voters. If it was, they would have all voted SNP. Yeah. Sorry, not um, um, SDP. SNP. So, yeah. No, Social Democrat, whatever. The, the, Scottish the, National you know, Party, yes. No, 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 no. I'm talking about if, everyone had, if, if, if everyone's opinion about Brexit was that absolutely we've all, all, all the people who voted Brexit now um, have changed their minds and it was all. If that was really at the forefront of their minds, they'd have all voted for the, the, the SDP, wouldn't they? Because they were the ones who said absolutely. What, the Lib Dems? Well, yeah, the Lib Dems. Sorry, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Look, the, the we've, got message, we've got a message. We've got a message from. Happen. We've got a message from David McKechnie saying that um, saying we would have got 25 forward. seats in 20, 2015, which I'm assuming that's either the Green Party or UKIP. Uh, uh, that would have been UKIP. Okay, right, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, personally, I'm a big fan of Nigel Farage. I know that will cause howls with some people, but... Yes, it's, 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 it's not, I, I'm not a, a big fan of, of Nigel Farage by, by any means. Um, I, I just found the whole Brexit thing to be... I think both sides of that debate could have made honest and strong cases. And it's, mm. it's a puzzlement which I think generations of historians are going to yeah. work away at. But the, ca the cases were there. I mean... To make dishonest arguments. When they could have made honest ones. That's have you have you heard of Richard North? Sorry? Are you have you heard of Richard North? No. No, I don't think I have. Sorry. Well he writes in the Telegraph and he's written two books on Brexit and they're brilliant. Um, oh, okay. uh, and and he advocates a, a a solution called Flexit. And yeah. and um, uh, there's there are others uh, who who have made, you know, very, very good cases. Yeah. Look, we've been but, up this uh, an hour and twenty. My, sorry, Roger, but my, my after, I, mean, I, I was asked to do several public discussions at the time of Brexit, you know, where they got all the parties together. And a, apart from the business about it's not what you want to leave, but what you'll be left with. The other thing I said was that, and I, I feel this very strongly, that I felt we were having the wrong discussion, that we were being encouraged to be absolutely fixated on this question of staying in Europe or not staying in Europe, where I felt the real discussion we ought to have been having was about, do we sign up to um, these neoliberal globalist trade agreements or not? Um, and I just felt that the way to make sure that, you know, if, 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 if a, a pickpocket doesn't want you to look at what he's mm -hmm. doing with this hand, he gets you to look at this one. Yeah. I, and I felt that's a lot of what it was. Yeah. I just felt, I felt that most of the problems that face this country would not be solved which, whichever way the, the vote went. Yeah. And, and therefore I said, well, the fact that we're being told to look, concentrate on this, get, um, get fixated on this, get worked up about this, make, you know, have this be the consuming issue that you concentrate on, uh, I just felt, well, that makes sure that we don't look at anything. I agree with but... you, David. You did a very good video called, list, uh, or blog, Listening to Brexit. 
oh, yeah, um, afterwards. And, and I mean, it struck a chord with me. Um, and, and, you know, I think, you know, you have to be congratulated on that. Yeah, David said it, it was 25 seats the Green Parties would have got, um, and UKIP would have got 66 seats okay, uh, fine, in 2015. Yeah, Thank you um, for, for telling me that. But, yeah, but I, thanks, David. That's that, very kind. Um, I, I remember thinking, yeah, I, I'm in favour of, of proportional representation, but you have to realise that other, other, what you might call um, extreme or fringe um, concerns will also get an area. Yeah. That's that's what PR does. It means that the things which aren't right at the centre get 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 some uh, get a voice yeah well and, we have it here um, in sweden and it seems to work perfectly well although yeah, I, I lots of people say it doesn't I just think but you need I, to be I realistic yeah so so um farage and you know the whole business about um, foreigners are the problem mm -hmm. would have got what was it 60 seats yeah well, okay well, I, I, to <laughs> be fair to him i don't think that's, that's what he's had one whinge about it yeah. so that's hmm. what he actually says i mean i, I I, I, I don't think that's his view. Um, no, their I, their I, 2015 I, I, manifesto was very similar to the Green Party um, manifesto, apart from on green issues, because he doesn't like windmills um, and, and wants to frack the hell out of the place, which I think yeah, he's wrong I, about. I, I, I think he's wrong about that. It's a, it's a discussion and, yeah. and, a, and a very fraught one about mm. the whole you know, yeah. um, immigration, um, racism thing. It's a, it's a, it's a I, don't, I, don't, I just country, don't see as a racist. I mean, I don't think Tommy Robinson is a racist. I mean, there we are. That's the cat amongst the pigeons. But I, 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 I really genuinely like Tommy Robinson. I think he's an honest guy. I've never met he, the man. Um, certainly some of the things that he's been reported to have said alarm me. But I do, uh, I do know that some of the way that the... Um, that the early, the legend that's been created about the early years of him in that organization has been a manipulated legend and and again i just think you i would rather disagree fundamentally with people on the basis of the truth rather than disagree with them fundamentally on the basis of a set of convenient lies it's 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 the resort to lies which is what is corroding our public life well, if you want to disagree with with um, Tommy Robson, then then do so on the basis of the truth. Yes. Well, and, and there's plenty to disagree with him. You don't need yeah. to have lies to disagree with the man. Yeah. I mean, I I, you know? I, I, it's, it's I, disagree, lie, I do not, disagree not with him with a lot of problem, things about about Islam. I don't think he's a very good theologian. Uh, but I think. <laughs> putting I, it mildly. I, I but think, let's not even get into that unless I, we're going to spend a day doing yeah. it because. I, let, let's do cool. geopolitics. I, I wrote a, an article about it. And it was a very difficult article, and they view it with enormous trepidation. Yeah. This was culture well. matters. I was, I was it was a very difficult thing yeah. to write. I, I agonised about it, I, and I, I sent it to most of the top people in the Green Party, saying, "What do you think?" And they were reluctant. They 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 left. Well, I thought it was an excellent article, and it really. I think you were quite surprised because you you did say to me that you were a bit worried about it, um, and yeah, I think I, I think we were people, both quite surprised that it was well received. Started. I mean, people do want some honest discussion. Yes, at the moment we don't have honest discussion. At the moment, yeah. I think what we have are people saying the point of view that I'm adhering to and the point of view that I am opposed to. Mine is so important and theirs is so dangerous that all tools or all, all, all strategies are justified including um lying and misrepresenting yeah, and yeah. the problem is when both sides do it both sides know the other side is doing it neither side wants to admit their side is doing it and then you have a recipe mm -hmm. for the poisoning of democratic yeah discussion mm -hmm. and worried. that's what worries me roger yeah yeah can you do another five minutes? Should we do a little bit about what's happening in the Middle East and geopolitics and how that all ties in? Or, in five know, minutes. <laughs> uh, we, we've been at it an hour and a half, so that's quite yeah, a long time. We should time. stop at 9.30. Yeah. People will have lost the will to live. Yeah, right? okay. Um, 
I think what's happening in the Middle East is, I've felt for a long time, that we are in the midst of the great gas war, the undeclared war. There's a northern theatre, which is Ukraine, which has gone a bit quiet, and there's a southern theatre, which stretches from Syria down to Yemen. Mm -hmm. And I think the great, the, in, in the southern theatre, the, 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 the teams are Saudi, Israel, America, on one side, um, the, the um, Assad, Russia, and Iran on the other, uh -huh. and um, Saudi has separately um, got a huge um, argument, a struggle for supremacy going on with Qatar, uh -huh. and that has now got mixed up in it. The Saudis have decided to try and um, brand Qatar as being um, the, the, the supporters of which is astonishing since if, if yeah. there's any country that funds ISIS and the rest of it and Wahhabism and, the, and, and it's Saudi, but they fund those people the way they fund um, um, the Muslim Brotherhood and, and um, Al Jazeera. You know, Qatar funds Al Jazeera and Al Jazeera is allowed to be critical of everyone except Qatar. Yeah. I mean, I and think I there's think a difference Saudi between Al Jazeera and the, and the Muslim all Brotherhood. Religious fanaticism, as long as you don't do it here. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think there's a, that we are approaching a proxy war, and it, it, it is the, the hegemonic powers that, that have been uh, yeah. America and, and Israel and Saudi feeling threatened by a new set of powers. Saudi threatened by Qatar. I think Israel feels very threatened by Turkey. Um, mm -hmm. um, America continues to feel threatened by um, Russia and um, Ir Syria and uh, Iran are caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. It hasn't spilled over into Iran, and I don't think it will. But um, well, but again, I've been criticised heavily within the Green Party for um, not taking the simple view of saying. We should carry on overthrowing Assad because Assad is terrible. Yeah, what Assad did you make of Jonathan but I'm not Bartley's? Sure uh... Is the right way to do Iraq or in Libya? No. But but I get criticised heavily, heavily and, and told that I'm a, a shill for right wing dictators and that you know I, I like these people, yeah. which is disappointing that that that's the only discussion there yeah. is. But that's. Oh, yeah, well, it that's was interesting what, what you wrote about Jonathan Bartley's reaction and statement about Trump tomahawking Syria. It's a whole other discussion, Roger, for mm. another day. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I think we should wrap up now. Right. And um, uh, what, I, what I'd like to say is I would really like it to know if people want to let Roger or me know if this was useful, if you want, if you've had enough of me for a whole lifetime and I should just go away or... Um, cool. Okay, and the stream will be live, and w what I'll do is, is um, we'll, we'll come off air now, so that processes, and I'll put it on just to see if anyone hangs around and wants to ask some, ask some, some questions, just, just yeah. two minutes. If then, people want to ask questions, yeah. then... There, there are eight people being... still watching, there were 115 at one point. Um, so I'm going to shut off the live thing for now. Um, well, thank um, you, Roger, we'll and thank you, everyone on. who watched. And I hope it hasn't yeah. been too. Well, boring. thank you, David, and hopefully we can do it again. Let's. Uh, mm. We'll just say.